Hello YouTube viewers welcome to my show Future Friday in today's episode we're going to take a look at plastics are they still our future most likely yes so let's try dive into it they, you have to understand before you understand plastic what kind of needs it met so what are our needs as a civilization so first need is that it has to be non permeable what does that mean in simplest term water should not go through from one side to another so as in like if you have this member water cannot go from one side to another that's why you can't use paper bag as a you know water bottle second it has to be lightweight like there are many things that are uh, non permeable like wood steel aluminum but they are heavy so it has to be lightweight whatever material we want to build it has to be flexible now you might say okay metal are flexible if you make them thin enough but again you make them thin enough you, they lose their structural integrity you can like poke your hole uh, like you know poke your, a hole in them with your fingers so suffice to say we can't really do that with metals and it has to be inert now this is a very crucial part what does it being inert means it's like it really does not care too much about the environment now like i'm showing you a picture of wood water does this to it water rust iron so flat out you can understand you uh, there are a lot of needs that we have to meet in order to replace plastic which we cannot flat out there is nothing that can replace this so plastics we have to understand uh, in deeper sense it's basically chain of carbon molecules that's all it is now there are many things carbon makes its, uh, its backbone and that's why we call it organic chemistry however there are a lot of other elements that we mix in like it's kind of uh, making a alloy how we do mix other elements in like we mixing carbon into iron to make steel plastic is like that so based on those composition what we are mixing into it like, are we mixing chlorine into it are we mixing uh, nitrogen into it are we mixing oxygen into it based on that we can get different different properties and plastic is not new technology and you have to understand it's one material that can rule them all and plastic is a big broad term which defines anything that is made by carbon on a molecular level so the idea about it being able to molecularly manipulate it's very crucial for this let's say you have a property of steel you cannot change it no matter how much alloy you make it you cannot make steel transparent you you cannot make steel flexible as a plastic sheet that those are the reason even though we can go to molecular level on almost any material plastic does allow us to go so deep that we can create different different algorithms basically different different behavior patterns that we can use for instance black and white like as you can see the old strong very sturdy uh, sort of plastic that we are used to it was made in 1907 then we have nylon that was ma uh, made popular in 1930s after that we made pvc which was made in 1926 then we have plexiglass like this which was made in 1933 so suffice to say uh, plastic is old tested technology and it is a wonder material the very fact that it allows like there is nothing major difference between all of these like of course there is a difference that's why they are different things but as uh, what i'm trying to say here is that if you look them up under a microscope more or less you will find carbon there like majority of their composition is still carbon and this is different from carbon fiber because carbon fiber is made out of either uh, threads of carbon graphene or things of that nature and they are glued together this is one sheet on a molecular level now there is no alternative to plastic and uh, to bring that point home you have to understand like let's say aluminum can you can say aluminum is recyclable it is like you know it has almost all the properties and uh, you know you can get your soda and drinks like that in aluminum cans however it has very high energy cost and i don't mean the cost that you need to mine the material i mean uh, to take the mined material make that into aluminum can that itself is a very long process that's a very high energy demand and because there is a high energy demand it's expensive same goes for cloth bags like everywhere nowadays you see there is a push for cloth bag without realizing if humanity as a whole starts to use cloth bags more will end up destroying the planet because plastic bags as a carbon footprint like how much carbon dioxide they release into the atmosphere because they were made it's negligible compared to what a single uh, fiber bag needs same goes for paper it's like you know you are trying to save forest by by directly burning them it's pointless and you have to understand all these things have very short life span compared to certain types of plastic like uh, paper bag yeah it's not going to last you long like barely few days and it will start to tear up 
and you have to understand nobody is going to buy it give a damn about planet or health or environment if it's not convenient we are animals at the end of the day convenience matter to us like it is neurologically wired into us that we make sure that we are not inconvenienced so suffice to say whatever wonder material that we're going to create it has to be convenient which neither of them are like you're not going to carry an aluminum bag or you're not going to make a paper can so plastic does solve all this so if plastic is all that good and magic why do we have issues with it well there are few issues with uh, uh, plastic some of a few must have heard about non biodegradable plastic like basically you fill it up in your landfill nothing happens to it like nothing over for centuries it will not break down which can interrupt lot of natural cycles especially like you know trees will uh, kind of have hard time uh, their root might get stuck into this and uh, microbial life also gets uh, damaged by these things and uh, some additives that we add into plastic to make them either like plastic as i told you the main backbone is carbon however we mix things to it now there are many things that we mix into it that are dangerous and toxic the reason why we don't ban them flat out is they are very um, the amount of let's say if you have one ton of plastic the amount of toxic toxins that we are using in them is very little it's like one part per million so suffice to say it's very little much however that does pile up if you are using like let's say hundreds of uh, water bottle thousands of uh, plastic you know wrapper uh, bags and things like that so it does pile up and the biggest danger the biggest threat of plastic that has just come out of the surface it's what we called microplastic as i told you like a uh, micro if you take a polyethylene bag like that normal plastic bag and look under microscope there are threads now those threads are literally indestructible because basically in simplest sense they are carbon chains now those threads can be broken down very small level like uh, in there are thousands of thread like how we have lot of fabric going around to make our fabric you have threads making a plastic bag however those threads when you send them into ocean or when you you know try to put them into landfills they break down now when they break down they not as you know they break down to a very small scale but they do not break down on a molecular level so the carbon in it is not released it is still a intact structure it's just a small structure it's like if you break down a brick wall and instead of getting dust and rubble you are still getting bricks so that's what happening here we are getting still bricks that's why it's non biodegradable and this microplastic is causing havoc that we had never thought that it could it's almost like putting lead in our petrol that was another issue that like harmed us for a very long time and you can find microplastic in your food that you are eating today it it is found in almost all sea creatures nowadays heck it's found in salt table salt now it is specifically if the salt is coming from sea there's a very high chance that it has it and humans already started ingesting it because it's uh, you know coming up from the food chain we have no idea how damaging this thing is it's the biggest threat as we speak so what is the hope for future now as i said plastic is a wonder material and there is no replacement that will allow us to save the planet so flat out we have to use plastic but how do we use it well without you know destroying everything else incineration is the simplest option basically we have to burn it at 1000 degrees celsius now that temperature is the very crucial part now it does not need to be exactly 1000 degrees 900 degrees celsius or 850 degrees celsius does the job but if you are burning plastic at that high temperature all the elements that we mixed in all the compounds that are dangerous and toxin they break down into smaller components those components are not as toxic and not to mention it is very easy to scrub them out of uh, you know your smoke etc out of your smoke stack so for that reason we have to burn it at very high temperature now you do see this uh, in uh, oil refineries where you see the refinery have a pipe that is burning on top that's because uh, many gases that are very toxic if you burn them uh, they lose their toxicity and become like less harmful and sometimes inert so we want to burn plastic at very high temperatures now of course the gases won't be 100% harmless because most of it it will be either it's a hydrocarbon so most of it might be just like you know carbon dioxide and water vapor but some will be some other things that we don't want in our atmosphere so we have to use what's called flue gas treatment and it's common thing it's not a new technology it's uh, sometimes used in coal power plants sometimes is used in other where the petroleum companies also use them so it's not unknown technology nor it's new and sweden this image i'm showing you is of sweden where they have flat out invested a lot of money into 
burning the garbage at very high temperature and they get electricity out of it so yeah they are actually getting paid by other countries who don't have a lot of land area to dump their garbage into sweden and sweden is like okay i'll take your garbage i'll burn it but i'll burn it at very high temperature so it is safe to burn it and they get electricity out of it so not only we are taking care of the plastic we are taking care of the our energy need little bit it's not like you're gonna get gigawatts of electricity out of it. it's barely a few megawatts however this is the reason why i'm still hopeful about plastic in the future this solves the issue of microplastic this solves the issue of toxins this solves everything and there is no replacement material as of now that can come even close to plastic and it's most likely not gonna be because carbon is the most versatile element in the periodic table flat out this is on a chemistry level this is on a periodic table level you cannot go more fundamental than that like carbon itself makes more compounds than everything in the periodic table combined at least what does Neil deGrasse Tyson says so this was my presentation on plastics I hope you guys liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you didn't don't worry about it dislike it leave a comment what would you like to see in the next episode of future friday and as always thanks for watching